I was on the tube the other day and I overheard a man say this. Look, if you ask me, Westminster's completely out of touch with the rest of the country. And it got me thinking, what does he mean by Westminster? Okay, I'm on the Jubilee line and yes, there is a station called Westminster, but is that what he means? That Westminster, the place, is out of touch with the UK? So I broke one of the cardinal sins of the tube. I spoke to a stranger. Excuse me, when you say Westminster, what do you mean? Westminster? Well, it just means the British Parliament and all the politicians that represent it. It's a metonym, Tom. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Wait, how'd you know my name? Well, you're wearing a name badge, mate. Huh? So, a metonym is a figure of speech where one object takes the place of another object that has a close association. So, for example, we said there Westminster. Westminster is where the Houses of Parliament are in London, and that's where our politicians go to make decisions. So, Westminster, the area, has become a metonym for the UK Parliament, okay? So, uh, when we want to talk about the UK Parliament, all the politicians that are inside Parliament, uh, what that represents, we can just say Westminster. Now, the classic example that I can think of is Hollywood. Hollywood. Now, what does Hollywood represent? Well, Hollywood is a, an area of Los Angeles, but it represents the American film industry. So, we can just say, for example, um, every actor wants to make it big in Hollywood. Now, instead of saying every actor wants to make it big in the American film industry, that would take too long. So, we just say Hollywood. So, every actor wants to make it big in Hollywood. Hollywood is a metonym for the American film industry. Now here's a short clip featuring the BBC political correspondent, Laura Kunzberg. See if you can identify the metonym here. 366 days in number 10. Hi Laura. Hello. Welcome, welcome. It was just... He won an election. Sanitizer. We left the EU. Okay, did you hear it? She said number 10, number 10. Now, she's going into the building that is number 10 Downing Street, and that is where the Prime Minister of the UK resides. However, yes, physically it is a building, but it also represents the Prime Minister and their staff. So, when we talk about number 10, we are talking about the Prime Minister. So, when number 10 makes a decision, we're talking about the Prime Minister and their staff. Now, if we think about an American equivalent, we could say the White House. In Britain, we would talk about number 10 or Downing Street because that's where the Prime Minister lives. But in America, well, the, the President lives in the White House. So when they say things like, the White House will make an announcement today, they mean the President. And that is a metonym for the President of the United States. So you can see the concept is in both American and British English. We have, they have White House in American English and we have number 10 or Downing Street in British English. Another political metonym, Whitehall. Whitehall is a street in central London which is home to many of the government buildings. So the ministries and the government departments. For example, the Ministry of Defence is on Whitehall. Now we use Whitehall as a metonym for the civil service. This is the permanent staff that advise the government. So for example, officials in Whitehall have advised the government to change their policy on climate change. Now as you see, there's definitely a pattern here between using a location as a metonym to represent an institution or something like that. So another good example would be Fleet Street. Fleet Street is a street in central London and traditionally it was where all the newspapers were based. These days they've moved to different parts of the country. But many years ago, Fleet Street was the center of the newspaper industry. And so now Fleet Street is a metonym for the newspaper industry in Britain. So for example, jobs in Fleet Street are hard to come by these days. Jobs in Fleet Street are hard to come by these days. So jobs in the newspaper industry are hard to come by these days. Okay, that's the newspaper industry. What about the financial services industry? Well, we've got the city the city. This again is the city of London, the, the area in central London, and we use the city as a metonym for the financial institutions 
in London. So uh, an example sentence, most grads from my university went on to get jobs in the city. Most grads from my university went on to get jobs in the city. So they went on to get jobs in the financial institutions in London. You can think of the city as being the British version of Wall Street in America. Wall Street is a metonym for the American financial markets and institutions and and so the city is the British equivalent. In fact, here's a nice clip with two metonyms that you might know. You prep folks coming out of not just college but also MBA programs for, for basically the next phase of their life, whether that's on Wall Street or in Silicon Valley. Okay, so he said Wall Street, which is the American financial institutions, and he also said Silicon Valley, which is the American tech industry. So two metonyms there, two words that represent large industries. So he's talking about getting a job on Wall Street, so in the financial institutions, or getting a job in Silicon Valley, so getting a job in the tech industry, so with Google, Facebook, etc., etc. Another great comparison between American English and British English is the words Broadway and West End. Broadway in American English would mean, would represent the theatre industry in New York or even wider possibly. So uh, if you said, I wanna make it on Broadway, that means I wanna make it in the theater industry in New York. Whereas in Britain, we would use the West End. The West End is an area of London. And again, it represents the theater industry in London and more broadly in Britain as well. So if I said she's got a starring role in the West End, that would mean she's got a big role in a play or a musical in London's West End. So the West End, again, is a metonym for the theatre industry in London. Another one I hear very frequently on the news is Scotland Yard. Now, Scotland Yard is a street in central London, and it used to be the home of the police, the headquarters of the Metropolitan Police. It's now moved to New Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard has become a metonym for uh, the headquarters of the Metropolitan Police in London, but it's also controlled by the Home Office and has national responsibilities. So we use Scotland Yard as a metonym to describe this very high level police force. So for example, Scotland Yard are investigating a terrorist attack. Scotland Yard are investigating a terrorist attack. It's very normal to have metonyms for governments or heads of state. So for example, we use the word Brussels as a metonym for the EU government. We use Beijing as a metonym for the Chinese government. We use Pyongyang as a metonym for the North Korean leadership. So often the places become the words that represent the governments or the, the leaders of a certain country. The Kremlin, again, is another fantastic metonym for the Russian leadership. So, so on the news report, if you hear them saying the Kremlin are in talks with the White House, well, you know that Russia is speaking to America. So we use methods a lot when we're talking about governments and leadership. Coming back to the UK, another one that we use is the palace. And this is the royal family. So for example, the palace has refused to comment on the crown, the crown being the TV show. The palace has refused to comment on the crown. So the palace, the royal family, that's what it represents, have refused to comment on the crown. A fantastic TV show, you should definitely watch it. And as you can see, this pattern of metonyms for powerful heads of state or governments, uh, it, yeah, we use it all the time. Okay, the last one I want to look at is the high street. We've got high street in British English and main street in American English. So when we talk about the high street here, we're talking about your average retail businesses, your average consumers. In every town in Britain, there was always a high street. It has the same shops on it. You've got Boots, you've got H&M, you've got WH Smith. You can find these shops on every high street around Britain. And so we use high street as a metonym to represent all of these things, the average retail business and the average consumer. So an example sentence might be, most shops on the high street have really struggled during the pandemic. Most shops on the high street have really struggled during the pandemic. So here in Britain, we'd say high street. In American English, Main Street. Okay, we're gonna play a quick memory game. I'm gonna show you nine words that we've just learnt. I'm gonna show you them for 10 seconds and I want you to remember all of them. Then, after the 10 seconds is gone, I'm gonna remove one 
and I want you to remember which word I've removed. I'd also like you to think about what the metonym represents. Okay, how was that guys? How was your memory? It's a fun game to do to, to recycle vocabulary. So you can do this by yourself. You can cut up bits of paper. You can lay them out on the, on the ground or you can do it in an app. I'm sure there's lots of apps you could do this uh, as a memory game for yourself. Okay, so remove one and see if you can remember it. Now guys, if you've enjoyed learning vocabulary with me, please check out my book, A Really British Guide to English. It has hundreds of wonderful words just like the ones you've learnt in here. Um, fresh, modern British English. If you want to get your copy, you can click the link below. There is a paperback, but also there's an ebook as well. The link is in the description below. It makes a perfect coffee table book or a great gift as well. All right, guys, until next time, this is Tom, the Chief Dreamer, saying goodbye.